Hello YouTube, back in the garage again today with the 2002 Honda Odyssey. I'm still chasing down this power steering fluid leak. So if you saw my last video, I did a full rebuild or overhaul of the power steering pump. And in doing that video, I was looking at the raw footage and within the first few seconds of the first clip I did of the raw footage for that video, I noticed that the high pressure line had a leak. There was a drip right there on the video. So right here, there's apparently there's a leak between the rubber hose portion and this crimped metal clamp, the connector between here and here. So there's a leak right there. So the fluid's leaking down and it's kind of soaking into everything and dripping on things. And it's actually dripping and running down the, the back side of the high pressure line and getting everything wet down below. So today's project is to replace this high pressure line. As always, to do the job properly, I have my factory service manual here. And it has a nice diagram of the, of the power steering high pressure line here. It connects at the top of the uh, power steering pump <clears throat> as a uh, an anchor point right here it has a power steering pressure switch uh, connection uh, as well as two anchor points for the hard line and this is the point where it enters the rack right there now let's take a look at the part here's your complete hose assembly and your part number is 53713 S0XA02 Let's open this up and take a better look at it. This part was a little over a hundred bucks. I was hoping that that uh, power steering pump seal kit was going to resolve the leak since that was only 20 bucks, but that was worth a try. So you can see here, this is the fitting that goes on top of the power steering pump. It's got two screws and a fitting with an O-ring on it. That fits down into the top of the power steering pump. I'll keep that closed. Here's the point where it leaks on the old one. And then there's an anchor point right here, clamp that goes around that little rubber part. Going down further, here is where the uh, the pressure switch goes. It screws into that hole, and it kind of has an electrical connector on it. Two more rubber bushings for anchor points on the hard line, and then we get a little angle here on the on this end of the hard line that attaches with a flare flare fitting into the steering rack. And to make up for any fluid loss, we're going to be using genuine Honda power steering fluid to uh, top off the system, and then we'll, we'll bleed it at the end. Let me show you this end of the steering rack under the driver's side of the car. And right there is where the two hard lines enter the steering rack on the driver's side end of the steering rack. And we're only going to remove one of those, the, uh, the line coming from the top of the power steering pump. I'm going to give those a liberal spray of penetrating oils and PB Blaster, hopefully so that they'll break free easily. Off comes the engine cover. These are 10 millimeter bolts. I've got my cardboard underneath and a drain pan, just so when I remove that hard line, or any of the end the fitting for the uh, pressure switch that I won't make a big mess and of course I got my companion with me alright so I told you wrong it's not those two hard lines to the right it's that one to the left which is actually facing the front of the car and hit that with a little PB blaster I can hit it let that soak in make that a little easier to come out alright after soaking for a little while let's see if we can get this this fitting to crack loose. Now I'm going to be using <laughs> like my nice fancy red 14 millimeter wrench. So I should be using a line wrench here just to make sure I don't round over that nut. I'm just going to see how tight it is. And it's pretty tight. Alright, so that nut's not going to come loose with a regular open-end wrench. I'm afraid I'm going to round off that nut and then I'll really be stuck. 
I'm going to back off and think about that for a bit and go work on some of the other connections and come back to this. Looking back on the new part, this is the connection we're trying to get loose. And it's a uh, it's pretty good. It's a 14 millimeter. It's a pretty good size, so we're going to have to come back to that with a different approach. But let's move on to these, these bushings. There's a strap around each one of these with one bolt holding them on. And that's around the back of the rack. Let's go uh, take those off next. All right, I'm going to hand hold this part. Sorry about the shaky video, but here's that one bushing with a little metal strap around it. There's a 10 millimeter bolt holding that metal strap on the bushing. So there's a little screw. The strap will come off. Yep, there it comes. There's a little metal strap. Alright, this anchor point on the right side is a little more tricky to get to. Again, it's a, it's a metal strap that goes over top of that bushing. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt down from the top. You have to fit a 10 millimeter socket on that and try and back it off. You don't have much room for the socket wrench. This thing's soaked with power steering fluid. It's kind of secured on there, so I'm going to leave it on there and I'll take it off after we get the whole hose out of here. So on the new hose, you can see where the pressure switch goes. The pressure switch screws into the hose into that fitting there, and then there's an electrical connector that goes into the pressure switch. Here on the passenger side of the car, up under the wheel well, you should be able to see that, that green pressure switch and the electrical connector going into it. Sorry I can't hold the camera and disconnect the connector, but I'm going to release the tab and uh, pull the connector apart. Alright, there we have the electrical connector disconnected from the pressure switch. Back up top now, we have a strap right here and an, a bolt that goes down through the strap that anchors this part of the hose. So this is a 10 millimeter fastener. Flip that strap up and out of the way. All right, so I decided to do the right thing. I was not able to get that uh, that flare nut off with a, a regular wrench without putting too much pressure on it. And the reason is because on a regular open end wrench, it only contacts the nut uh, in two places. So I went and bought myself a flare nut wrench set or a line wrench set. And the difference with these are, you can see, first of all, they're fatter. So got a lot of a lot of meat on them, and they also they contact the nut at five of the six points rather than just two. So it reaches over the the line, slides up on the nut, and because they're a lot thicker and they hit the nut on five different places, we should be able to take that off properly and not end up wringing that thing off. That got it. That got it. That thing was really tight. I had to put a wrench extension on the end of that flare nut wrench.
I'm try and minimize some of this fluid loss by sticking a cap of some sort in the rack. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll try. That might help. Alright, now that the hard part's done down below, we're up top again. We're going to take out the two bolts that hold the top end of the high pressure line to the pump. Alright, so the hose is completely loose now on both ends and all the anchor points in between. Let's figure out how to take it out. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling this hose up through the top, trying to work, work it out from the bottom up through the top. And I hooked up a bungee cord to the top there to keep some tension on it. Took the other end of the bungee cord up onto the hood. And then I can get below the car and kind of work it all through and twist it and pull it and hopefully pull it back through the top. It's a little tricky doing it by yourself. After much wrestling and maneuvering underneath, I think I finally got it loose. Alright, now that we have the old hose out, we can compare it to the new hose. Here's that clamp that uh, was on the uh, the passenger side. It went right around this, this bushing right here. I just had to pry it open enough to, uh, to get it off. And we'll transfer that to the new one. Actually, I, I think I'll wait and I'll put that on after I get it on the car so I can see exactly which way it goes. The other thing is this pressure switch. So there's your pressure switch. It's got an electrical connector on that side, and that's the side that screws in. It's got an O-ring on it, so let's remove this old O-ring. See if we can find a replacement. So here's my O-ring set. And this size here is a P8, and if I put those side by side, it looks like there's a good new O-ring. We'll use that one on the pressure switch. Take a little bit of new power steering fluid and lubricate that O-ring and then install it into the new hose. The last thing to transfer is this clamp. Pull the clamp off by separating it, sliding it over the new hose, closing it back up. And now to reverse the process, I put some masking tape on the end there just to uh, hopefully keep it from getting contaminated as it rubs against all the dirty parts down below. I'm going to feed it back down through the same path where the old one came out.
Alright, so getting the hose back in place was a lot of fun. Not. It took a long time and I definitely tried my patience, but I got it in place finally after wrestling it into submission. So now I can take off this blue masking tape. I'm glad I put it on there because probably would have gotten some contaminants in there. And I'll pull out this plastic plug that I stuck into the rack to try and limit the amount of fluid that was lost. And now I'll go ahead and see if I can get the line started. So now I'll see if I can get the flare nut started. I want to do this while everything's loose so I don't want to end up crossing the threads. There we go. So once it goes in easy and I can turn it by my fingers I know I'm not crossing the threads. So I'm going to leave that finger tight for now and then I'll get everything else all secured and anchored in place before I tighten it up for good. So here's the passenger side bushing that holds the hard line to the frame. And here's that clamp that was on there I didn't show you before, but I just spread it open and then it fits around that bushing and then a screw goes down through it into the frame. Now I'm installing the bolt. Here's the one on the driver's side, and the clamp that goes on that goes this way with a hole in it, and it goes horizontally into the frame. So I can slip that over the bushing, push it up against the frame, and run, run that bolt in. Now I'll re-secure the top hose clamp, swing it around, line it up, put the bolt through the clamp. One last time under here, now I'm going to tighten up the flare nut, again with the flare nut wrench. All right, I got the uh, electrical connector plugged back into the pressure switch, as you can see right there, the green pressure switch. And now to reattach the top of the hose to the power steering pump, we'll remove this protective cap. And I'm going to lubricate the O-ring with a little bit of fresh power steering fluid. Go ahead and get the O-ring seated inside the bore there. Reinstall the two screws, 10 millimeter screws. The O-ring is what seals this, so the bolts don't need to be very tight. Just snug them up. Now let's take a look at the power steering fluid reservoir. Put the light down behind it so you can see. And, and the level drops significantly, in fact, out of sight. So we're going to top that off up to the to the uh, upper level line to start with. Now with that filled up, I'm going to uh, crank the engine and uh, see if the level drops. After starting the engine for a moment, the fluid indeed did drop. So I'm going to top that off again. Just like that. 
So now we're going to bleed the whole power steering system to purge any air that's trapped in there. You do that by uh, cranking the engine and turning the wheel from lock to lock a few times until, it, uh, until it's bled. So it's good to do that on smooth concrete like this or with the front end up in the air just so you don't scrub your tires too much if you're worried about that. And after bleeding, let's check the fluid level one last time. And yep, looks like we're still good right there at the upper level mark. Now I'm going to check for leaks. I don't see any leaks around the, uh, the top connection here. It looks good and dry. And I'll start the engine and we'll take a look down at the, uh, the steering rack and check that uh, flare nut fitting and make sure that's not leaking as well. Alright, I think we're dry. Last thing to do is to replace the engine cover. All right, that wraps up the job replacing the high pressure line on the power steering pump. Uh, I'm really happy with the result, but I must say it was much more difficult than I anticipated. Getting that uh, flare nut loose was, uh, was a challenge. It was really tight, and I resorted to doing the proper thing and buying a set of flare nut wrenches. And just getting the, the, the power steering line, once it was all disconnected, getting it out of there and uh, getting the new one in was... A good bit more difficult than I thought it would be too. It was pretty challenging trying to find a means to work it around all the other hard obstacles and to coax it into place. Luckily I didn't didn't have to bend it, but uh, otherwise it went in just fine. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.